So now we're moving from the hunter ring to the jumper ring. And uh, so the horse, again, um, is being brought to the ring. And you'll always need, remember, we walk the course of jumpers. We need someone to hold the horse. Ideally, the horse should be held with the lead line, not just the reins, especially when they're in a martingale situation like this and the horse runs off. You really should have um, a lead rope. That would be um, proper etiquette, um, safety to hold the horse. And uh, again, with the cooler weather, then we've got a nice cooler to put on, um, on as well. Okay, so can we take that off the cooler so we can see him? <coughs> so we can start with the rider again. Uh, so Jill is really wearing the exact same thing that she did for the hunters. There would be no difference at all for the jumpers um, from head to toe. Again, her stick can be a little bit longer. She's not using the hunter bat. She has a normal whip. And again, same thing, it can't be longer than 30 centimeters. But in the warm-up ring, she can warm up with a dressage whip. You can't jump with it, but if you wanted to go out and flat your horse, you could use a dressage whip. Just stand a little bit more in front of the horse, Jill, that's great. So this is Campbell, and Campbell is a jumper, and we'll start with his head. He's using a jumper bridle. Again, there's, uh, there's probably no limitation to the bit. We can use hackamores, we can use gags, we can use all kinds of different bits. That's not going to be a limitation. We can use the figure eight noseband, the cavison, the drop. He just has a normal cavison. And he's using a running martingale. And again, same thing with reins. They can be leather, they can be rubber, they can be hoops. Um, any kind of rain is possible in the jumpers as well. Same saddle, uh, but she's got the jumper saddle pad. Just turn him around, Jill, so they can see, and where we put his ring number. So with the jumper pad, we're able to um, put his ring number, safety pin, to the saddle pad. So if Jill had three horses to ride, it'd be nice that, that she didn't change her number each time. The number would just stay on the saddle pad. And the number should always be, as the, the stewards always want, the number to be with the horse all the time. And um, you can see that she has those colored stirrups, and they are permitted in the equitation they aren't. You need to have uh, black or actually just silver ones. So be careful when you buy colored stirrup irons if you actually in the jumper ring for sure, but it might not be allowed in other disciplines. And Campbell has front and back boots on. He can also wear bell boots. Again, your style of boot for the front and the back is completely up to you. And, uh, and let's just turn, or, turn him around one more time. And he's not braided, but what he has is he's got little ponytails in that keeps his mane all laying one side and down. So it's like a little ponytail. And um, it keeps it nice and, and even, and uh, she can still grab the mane if she needs to. Um, and there'll be nothing flying around in, in the wind with, uh, with this horse. He can, he's wearing a bonnet, obviously, for sound. Um, he could wear earplugs as well in the jumpers, um, but he just uses sound, the sound, I don't know how soundproof they are, but the soundproof bonnet. And, um, and, and that is our jumper right there. Okay, good. Now, I'm gonna add one more thing. That's good, Jill, thank you. I'm going to be a jumper rider as well. So, I can come to the show ring with this. If the prize list says I could wear a polo or a little a jacket like this. If you're going to wear a polo, it should be like this. So you have to have a collar and you have to have a sleeve. So I would be, and I'm going to show you how I put my helmet on as well. And I'd like to encourage you to come to your lessons this way as well. Don't come to the lessons with the spaghetti straps and the sun shirt. I turn them away and tell them to go back, okay? You want to come to your lesson showing a professional turnout. Right away I go, that girl, that rider wants my attention. They want to be judged. They want to be taught. So you need to wear proper equipment. Also, my show clothes, I should try them on before the horse show to make sure they still fit. Uh, to make sure they're not brand new and they kind of feel a little slippery and, and I don't know what I put on my boots or my pants but I'm really sliding today. So you should come to your lessons in proper attire. Okay? And so the polo shirt has to be a solid color. Not stripes, not this, it's solid color. And when you're wearing a helmet, in the jumpers you have, are seeing more people wear uh, braids or ponytails. Um, again, 
If you have a lot of hair and can't get it up under your helmet, maybe you should wear it down. Um, but again, I don't have a lot of hair, so I'm going to put on a hair net. But I really, um, there's a reason why we want our arms to be covered. Or you could wear a show shirt as well. But again, people are wearing the wrong equipment and someone needs to tell them that. So, I tell them that. Sorry, I'm having a hard time with my elastic. Oh, I got them right here too. So, it depends on how much hair you have, but you will put your hair net on. Get your, all your hair up, and you need elastic. my left spur. There's also high and low. People have them on upside down and on the wrong feet. So if you're going to wear the spurs, learn how to wear them. Okay? And again, you have spur rests on your boot, then your, your spur is supposed to fit on top of that. Again, if, there, if your coach thinks you need to lower your spur a little bit, that's fine. And the strap, you'll see when Jill comes back out, the strap of the spur needs to hang that way. So when, you, when I see a person come for a lesson that they have the spurs on the wrong feet, again, first impressions are important. Know how to wear your equipment. Get a rule book. Get a competition coach to teach you how to prepare for competition. And when you're training at home, you should be training for competition. So wear the outfit. Wear the equipment. Very rarely will I send a rider into the ring without a spur or a whip. You need to have equipment, and if you don't have to use it, you should at least know how to hold it. Maybe you don't need a spur to whip, but at some time you'll have to, and you should teach them how to hold it and how to wear it. Even if you don't need a stick, it's nice to have it when you go in the ring, and sometimes you will need it. So learn how to put on spurs, learn left and right, and learn that the strap goes to the outside, and wear proper clothing for your lesson and for your clinics. Okay? Good. Thank you.